Dude, it's been like a month. I know. I don't even know who you are anymore. I don't know. Am I Terrell? Um, let's pull this uh, thing up. We're just gonna hit the intro right off the bat. We're gonna jump right into this. Don't yeah, you don't. Yeah, we don't want to disturb Josh. Yeah. You know the deal. This is Wrench Life, the Wrench Life podcast. Wrench Life with a Y. Nothing's as good. I it's, never <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been so long. I don't know because nothing. There's nothing better than feeling good. I don't nothing know. better than feeling good. Yeah, something like that. Uh, I had prepared one, but I figured it's been a while. Probably a little out of practice. So I thought maybe we just shoot the shit a little bit. Talk about some stuff. Cool. Uh, a little more casual. Uh, we did so many that were so dense. The one I've been working on is going to also be kind of dense. So I thought maybe... Yeah, how you doing? I'm pretty good. How's your ear? It sucks, yeah. Um, before the podcast, I was showing Dave my my gnarly ear cyst that I've had for many years. That's never It hurts like once a year Yeah. until you smash it with a heavy kettlebell against your head. Do you ever try and pop it? It has popped like and it comes six back. years ago. It was it was almost this big. Yeah, and it just like like went out. One you ever watch those videos where people pop cysts no, on the internet? It freaked me out. Oh man. my god, I hate it. <laughs> god, it, it's like it's like it's terrible, but you can't stop watching like nine eleven videos. <laughs> those aren't terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, a two interest I had a ER or a urgent care trip, and then this with two days in a row was pretty good. I should lift that mic up a tiny bit. So, um, yeah. All shout out to all you moms out there. Happy Moms Day. Yeah. What a great philosophical discussion about the context in which it's appropriate to say Happy Mother's Day. No, probably the context what what it's appropriate to not say Happy Mother's Day, I guess, mm. anymore. With my brother earlier. We've had a, gr- a lot of really good discussions lately. Yeah. You know, that's great. What are the contexts in which you shouldn't say Happy Mother's Day? Um, I don't want to get into it. Okay. Uh, the details are just <laughs> personal. Yeah, that makes too, sense. Too personal. Um, but also, so that's a good segue, because what I wanted to talk about today is just uh, diversity of thought, you know, mm. and how a lot of what Wrench Life stuff, you know, we talked a lot about being honest with yourself, you know, but that kind of comes with, like... It's kind of the same way as saying you need to have a diversity of thought internally and externally. You need to yeah. be able to accept the fact that, oh, wait, eating fat isn't bad for me. Or maybe I am a huge piece of garbage, you know? like <laughs> Maybe I'm not nice. It's like yeah, that right? thing where it's like if, if, you know, every group of friends has a, has a dumb person and a smart person and a, and a dickhead. And if you're like, man, everyone around me is really smart, you're, you're probably the dumb guy. Yeah. Or if like, man, everyone's so nice. Like, there's no asshole in our group. Then you're yeah, probably the asshole. The asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. It seems like right now there's, there's kind of a dearth in that. Like, all the, all the debates, the political topics, the social topics are all like, they're so polarized. And both sides of the argument are, are ridiculous. And neither side can see, like... The people that are in the extremes of the arguments can, can't see that they're just as extreme as the other side. And I think that kind of mentality, well, there's a lot of reasons for it, social media and all that stuff and mainstream media. It just infects all of your thinking. Um, and I was actually, what kind of brought me into this is I, I found this another guy on Internet guy, not an Internet guy, he's a scientist guy, but there's Internet guys that find these smart scientist guys and then put them on the Internet and all of a sudden they become like, you know, holy shit. Let me pull this up really quick. I want to get the guy's name right. Because it, yeah. it was one of those names that looked like a name, but it's... Oh, wait, the guy's name is... Oh, Lane McGilchrist. Christ. So his name... It's L-A-I-N. Lane? Lion? Lane? Lane? I like... Don't Lane sounds good. I thought it was Ian at first, and I was like, wait, Lane. Lane McGilchrist. 
So he's like a neuropsychologist and a clinical psychologist. And he wrote this book that I'm absolutely going to read. What about, it's about left brain and right brain. Mm -hmm. And the original context of left brain, right brain, the paradox that we were kind of all taught is pretty much wrong. But the fact that it's, there are separate parts of the brain that do separate things is true. Yeah. And he, and he talks about in the book, he lays these parallels between the great societies and how, well, the societies that weren't great usually pick one side or the other side of, of the two thoughts of thinking that people have and they mm. fail. And the big ones have been the ones that have incorporated both in, in, a, in a, a manner that works until a point. Mm. And then the left brain, like he said, basically... The left brain is more like abstract and like free thinkery kind of, mm -hmm. and but the problem with that is that it assumes that everything else is wrong. Hmm. I think it's it's I'm I'm trying to get this all wrong, but basically said like we're at the same place where like the Romans and the Greeks were, where they became too like almost thinky. They thought they were being, being really open minded and progressive, and they weren't seeing how they were alienating a lot of other. <clears throat> Diversity of ideas. I guess you could draw a lot of parallels between us and the Roman times where we have, like, so much extravagance and, yeah. like, so much laziness that yeah. all you, you know, that's one of and the, the free and the, thinkers It's came bureaucratic. From. The ruling yeah. state is, is so detached from the people. Yeah, and it's just, like, we're, we're set up so well that our problems are so dumb. Yeah, and the great thing is in this, I watched, um, he did a, um, a discussion on this channel, uh, internet, YouTube channel called Rebel, Wils Rebel w Wisdom, which is really great. Mm -hmm. They like interview all like the IDW people and everything. And, and the guy that runs the channel is a great interviewer and he's really smart. And like, it's like, he's really humble. Like he never even says what his name is. I don't think. And he's, really? he's got a British accent or something like that. And he's just, he's like really good at pushing. Huh. Like he had Dave Rubin on last week and he really pushed Rubin and Rubin was getting a little frustrated because he was asking some you know, good questions. Yeah. But the, how I found the guys is, is he was, I'm um, one of the, well actually Rebel Will Rebel Wisdom is doing an event where they they brought four different people what was that? I was just gonna write it down so I don't so Yeah, they don't brought four it. people on to talk about like the biggest problems facing society and it was it was Brett Weinstein and his and his wife Heather Hang and this guy and then another guy and they put did a couple minutes of each of the people, like some of their thoughts and I'm like, Wow, those are good thoughts. Mm -hmm. And he referenced that that guy had sat down with Jordan Peterson and I was like, Oh, let me watch that. And I went onto YouTube, and I, I guess I already watched it at some point uh, yeah. in time. So the, this is where it comes back to the left-right brain thing. So Jordan Peterson's main thing is this order and chaos. Mm -hmm. And and McGilchrist point at, points out that there's like a, there's kind of like a, 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 not exactly a, an hypocrisy in, in Peterson's thought, but he's saying like, you're saying order is an antidote to chaos. But you're also saying, like, you want to walk the line between the two. So it, it kind of gets a little gray. Mm -hmm. And there are parallels between his left brain and right brain way of thinking. But there aren't parallels. And, like, so they were just, it was just two really smart people contrasting and everything. Yeah. He doesn't agree with, McGill Christ doesn't agree with the masculine, feminine aspects that Peterson mm -hmm. puts to it. But he kind of said it's like he's almost inflated those things to be too in line but it may have been done just for the sake of the book you know yeah. i mean there's some uh what is it writer writer liberty to make it a little more digestible i guess yeah maybe. So there's some of that but so mcgill christ thing is that left and right or order and chaos or known and unknown which are a lot of the same things that peterson talks about is that that they're actually like a relationship mm -hmm. and there has to be two and he talks about with clinical psychology how one of the main things a clinical psychologist does is gets people to realize that all the parts of themselves that they hate, there's there's positive aspects to the things they don't like. Mm -hmm. But to the parts of themselves they do like, that there's negative aspects as well. So, you know, you might think you're an awesome dude and you're great at everything, but it turns out you might just be really cocky and pissing people off, right? Yeah. You might not see that. I might not see that. <laughs> Which pulls it into this diversity of thought thing. Yeah. That you need to be able to realize, well, maybe I'm wrong. Well, there's that thing with, like, you know, if you're left or right, there's an extreme to either end of that. That it, it, it's, it's a circle. It's not just a line left or right. It, 
kind of, it's a yeah, curve. Yeah, so like yeah. if you go far enough left, you get to that extremist almost, which becomes almost aligned with the right and vice versa. Yeah. In any sort, political or, political or otherwise, in your thinking. I, I've always thought that was pretty fascinating. It's, it's almost like when, when I, in history class, they talk about how Republicans and Democrats used to be flipped. Yeah. Like in the early 1700s yeah. or whatever when it was started. So I think that's sort of where we're heading now, it seems like, where the leftists are getting so extreme that even, like, it's just so, pol- like you're saying, polarizing, that you're not listening to the other side or trying to meet in the middle at all, that just forcing people to move l- right when they're originally yeah. left. I think people, uh, well, first of all, we, we try to over-label things. Yeah. And it's like there's like a total myth that people that are progressive and left are are <clears throat> liberal and free. It's like the, the left is getting progressively more authoritarian mm-hmm. to where the right like the the people on the left think like Republicans and conservatives are like oppressive authoritarians, but half of all uh, conservatives are are conservative liberals. Yeah. Or uh, libertarians. I'm sorry, libertarians who are like, yo, you do you and I do me, and yeah. it's like that's the opposite of authoritarian on yeah. the the political spectrum test that it has that libertarian to authoritarian. Yeah. And when you're saying everyone needs to abide by these rules because this is what gender is or this is what that is or whatever, you know, abortions for all or abortions <laughs> for none. It's like that's very authoritarian. <laughs> abortions for some tiny miniature American flags for Yay. others. <laughs> and I actually, I wanted to talk to abortion because it's such a hot topic right now yeah. in the debate. And it, it's exactly like that where anyone on any far polarity of it basically views the opposite as entirely wrong and, and evil and and and, it, and they're both completely incapable of seeing that the other one is just as ridiculous like yeah Georgia passing the bill saying if there's a heartbeat it's a person and now it's it's essentially murder mm-hmm. is it is just as ridiculous as saying up until the minute of birth you can abort that's a thing. Where is that a thing? Uh, Probably everywhere thing. now. Really? Uh, Virginia for sure, for sure, and their that late term abortion is a big discussion in the Democratic Party right now. That's scary. Yeah, and they're both ridiculous, and it's like, you can't. They're, it's so contextual, you know. You can't just say all of it's bad and all of it's good because you don't know the context of every situation. Mm-hmm. And well, that's where it gets weird because the, in legality, it's hard to um, foster like nuances of situations yeah pull the mic up a little bit higher there we go a little bit of that right there all right cool there we go yeah and for me like one of my biggest pet peeves is when it's bad arguments you know and the whole the entirety of the abortion debate aside from the fact that everyone on one side can't see the other side and everyone's looking at it the most like it's the most ridiculous. Like I saw this one meme and it said, so in Georgia, this is this whoever made this meme did not read the law, has no idea the context of the law that passed. It's just a reactionary feminist yeah. probably. And so the, the it was a, the meme. It really isn't a meme. It was like a picture of a text. It was like women can be charged for murder for abortion in Georgia. Murder is a felon felony felonies can't vote oh i see what's happening here Hmm. and it's like okay that's kind of funny like but you have to be insane to think that politicians are actually thinking through how can we try to take the women's right to vote away like yeah first of all you're giving politicians hmm. a lot of credit for that's smart yeah there's no way they came up with that (laughs) and no one's trying to do that but people are going to see that meme and go oh yeah you know they're, they're gonna it's, the patriarchy is winning. It's like, they're oh my God, no over. one is trying to do that. It's, it's like, so funny. In, in the same hand, they'll be like, they're so bad at legislation and their jobs. But also, here's this super niche, creative way to take our rights away. Yeah. It's like, you can't really have both of those things. Yeah. And then I'll, <laughs> I've seen this one other, other really, really, this is a really great point someone made. But the problem with the context of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, the meme quote thing is that it works across the whole spectrum of pregnancy. It said, well... It said, if at the point in which a heartbeat is detectable, it's a person, does that mean you can get life insurance on that person? Hmm. Does that mean 
if it's an illegal person and it's a naturalized baby, you can't deport the pregnant mother. Hmm. Does that mean... And it was just a whole bunch of situations saying like, okay, that's a yeah. person, right? Yeah, yeah. But that ap argument applies up until the moment of birth. Like, it doesn't validate... Like, it. <clears throat> that's like a... There were like... That was supposed to be a pro-choice argument, but it, like I looked at it and I was like, that sounds way more like a pro-life argument. Yeah. And then a, a bunch of Hollywood celebrities... Uh, over the weekend were tweeting uh, sex strike that they want women to stop having sex with their partners until abortion is uh, or the law is overturned in Georgia and it's like it's like it was like don't ha it, like they were saying like don't have sex unless you're planning on conceiving in, <clears throat> until the law is overturned and I was like wait so as a secular leftist, in reaction to what you think is a, a right-wing conservative law, you're adopting a conservative viewpoint of sex and marriage in reaction to it. It's like, oh my God, it's like, so I'll take a deep breath And here. also like, you want a bunch of horny old dudes that aren't getting laid to try and make decisions? Ah! Like, that's even worse. <laughs> you always got to clean the pipes for a big decision. You gotta. It's important. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not trying to beat a dead horse about like abortion or anything. I'm just saying like generally like this is a good topic that's hot on the hot plate right now. Yeah. It's like people are just so like idealistic echo chamber. It's <clears throat> bad. It's it's like I mean it's so easy to validate your own opinion. It's yeah. it's it's just as easy to to find an argument against your opinion, but no one wants to do yeah. it because it's who, who like no one likes to be wrong yeah, so my whole thing about like having a good argument i hate that people have dumb arguments for me i look at the whole situation and i go okay well why would we be talking about abortion at all right because like no one i think unanimously we can all agree we would all like to live in a world where there's never an abortion right yeah of course that'd be great but why are there abortions because people get pregnant. Why do people get pregnant? Because they're having unprotected sex. Why are people having unprotected sex with people they don't want to have a child with? That's, that is what the real question is. We're putting the cattle in front of the horse and being like, all right, well, what are, what, what are we going to do with all these aborted babies? <laughs> we'll come for the baby. <laughs> it's like, yo, just don't, don't fuck someone that you don't want to have a kid with without protection. Like, it's not that hard. I guess it wasn't hard for me, but I guess for a lot of people, it's a difficult thing to do. I'm, I'm not careful. <laughs> You're crazy. I know. <laughs> it's not good. You know, it's like... <laughs> oh, one of the other arguments on that meme before I'll say about is that can the mom start claiming child support at six weeks when the heartbeat starts beating? That's a good one. Valid point. And then, having a baby is expensive. Yeah, start it's not even ex it. it's expensive in cost, but that does that that doesn't even scratch the surface of how expensive it is in in time and energy. Yeah, to raise a person, <laughs> that's insane. <clears throat> it's I uh, like that's the conversation I think we need to be having, and and I think part of it is the male ego being like, dude, I don't need to wear a condom. I'm a man. Like, there's like a man. There's like a. It's almost like. Men look at wearing a condom as like a beta male maneuver. Like yeah. alpha males don't wrap up. Only betas do. It's like, I'm a big straw. I ain't need a condom. It's like, yeah. I know we were all 17 and dumb or 27 and dumb at some point. <laughs> Maybe it's right now. But come on. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Like, uh, well, yeah it's, it's, when you have problems in your life, that's the thing. It's like you need to look at both sides of it and then be like, well, where's this problem coming from? And is there something I could do, you know, two years ago that eliminated this and then I should stop doing it now so two years from now I don't have to deal with this problem again? And, not, and I'm not saying it like the analogy for the child doesn't apply in that one. <laughs> <laughs> but just behavior in general, you know. But like, you know, accidents happen, right? And we need to mitigate the accidents. You can have a cheat day, right? But you can't just stuff your face with cake every day. You get yeah. diabetes. <laughs> no, take your foot. You need your feet. You need your feet. It's just so frustrating. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's the, it's my generation of people just wanting to do whatever they want without any consequences. Yeah. Because we're so spoiled. Like, I, I, uh, 
proctored a high school cooking Is that a butt exam. doctor? No. That's a proctologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I proctored the same exam that I took my senior year of high school, mm-hmm. and it is, like, half of what it was six years ago when I took it, and it was... It was Smaller so, portions? No, just, like... Less like, dishes? Just less things to do. It <laughs> yeah, was yeah, yeah. so, like, bastardized and babied and nerfed. Mm. Like, it was just... Are those people gonna make it in the real kitchen? Some of them will. The, the, then there was. You a... should be happy about that. It's eliminating your competition, which is gonna give you a pay raise down the road because you know how to hustle. Not necessarily. <laughs> it's just like there's there's just no one who wants to be a cook anymore because it, yeah, yeah. it's hard and it sucks and was like everyone. What Greg Henry was saying the other day. Yeah, he's like, it just sucks. Like, why well, I don't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, there was a kid that was literally standing around half the time. Just, like, looking at stuff, like, watching other kids, what they were doing. Just, like, oh, I'll start peeling this carrot, I guess. And then, like, wandering around. And he finished. Wow. With, t- with, like, he barely finished. But he had, like, every other kid was done an hour and a half before he was. Because wow. it's so easy. And it was just, like, <laughs> all these kids were freaking out. And I'm, like, you got, if you can't handle this, you have way bigger problems in your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I kept and you know they're all afterwards they're all like oh it was just so much easier now and it's like it, it just hurt my hurt my soul a little bit to see how how easy yeah. that became. Well, what I did right there when I was saying well it gives you less job competition that's like yeah. the devil's advocate that's like the well divers- you're right too the diversity of it but you could also look at that and be like well if that's the if that's if a, there's always a percentage of people coming to the workforce like that if that percentage gets larger. Well, then what's it going to do for the entire industry and, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah. I you mean, know what they say, you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. Too many cooks. I wonder where that's where it came from. Probably. It's probably the same thing as too many cooks. Too many cooks. I remember that. That's fucked up. <sighs> well, why don't we do a couple moments here? I got a few moments. Yeah. Um. Oh, before that, I have a, my, I was... Talking to my mom yesterday, since Mom's Day, we were talking about anxiety. Mm-hmm. And I don't think she's ever listened to a Peterson thing or anything, but she was telling me, like, uh, how, how to, I need to work, like, get a handle on my anxiety because it's a real lot of my issues in yeah. my life. And she's like, you need to, like, you know, meet that dragon and, like, find out what you're going to do with it. Like, you're going to kill the dragon or are you going to, like, yeah. work with it or what? And I'm like, man, that's some serious that's well, like it, well, right that's, alignment that's what it's the that's the whole thing with yeah. peterson that it's like ingrained in you that yeah. it's this horrible monster that you have to deal with and what that's better why the dragon that. has the gold yeah it's why the symbolism of the dragon you ever hear we one of the lectures he breaks down the dragon and he, he basically says the dragon is like a hybrid of all of the animals that used to prey us as we evolved yeah it's, it's got like, like it's the talons snake. of it's the got um, a, of a bird, eagle. bird birds of prey yeah, yeah it's, it's everything it's a flying snake bear yeah <laughs> <laughs> and every scale and fire and it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll burn you fire, yeah <laughs> one of my favorite peterson things is the um breaking down the the holy grail and you know all the the knights of the round table having to like um, find the thing, the Holy Grail. They don't know what it is, but it's the thing. It's the yeah, Holy yeah. Grail, and the the only way to find it is to go into the darkest part of the woods that you're the most afraid of. Mm. And that's what every knight did, is they went as far into the scariest part to find the thing. And, that, well, and, and he was, also points out that the ta- they are at the round table, yeah. because they all, it, it, it's, they're all working together equally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not a head at the table, although there is the King Arthur or whatever. Yeah. Is that the same thing? I think so. Whatever. But I mean that kind of ties into like the the whole argument echo chamber thing. Is it the only way to find a real answer to your argument or um, progress at all? Is to go into the dark part of the woods that you don't want to. Yeah, where you, what you need to thing. know the most is where you least want, want to look. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, like, if you're horribly diabetic, type two, science has proven time and time again, if you stop eating sugar and carbs, it'll go away. Your pancreas will heal itself. And that's the last place an obese diabetic wants to go because they're so addicted to sugar. Yeah. They, they are willing to cut off their foot, inject themselves with whatever, or take whatever pills any day as long as they can st- keep shoveling vanilla into icing face. into their nostrils. <laughs> and <laughs> Dude, have you watched my 600-pound life? No, I don't. <laughs> it's so bad. 
My girlfriend is very into it, and I've been oh, watching fuck, it. And fuck it's, that. Fuck TV. It's so bad. Did the, it, there's, there was a kid on there who was like 24. Mm-hmm. He was... Jeff Gordon? Yeah. He was 1,000 pounds. Oh, my God. He wore it like 600, though. Like, he, he could stand. <laughs> he could stand. <laughs> like, there was people on that show that were 600 pounds that were like... Kids, get help mama get to her diabetes juice. Uh, clean my <laughs> right. We're going to stick. <laughs> and I called it in the beginning because he was like this, this, obviously he was super overweight. So he's this weak millennial beta male that just like wants everything handed to him. And mm-hmm. I called it. I'm like, this kid's going to die because he's not, he's not like, he was so against getting help and everything that he he ended up dying he and his mom wow. were both overweight but the doc, when they weighed him the do, he got into the doctor's office and the doctor's like uh you're 950 pounds you might be the fattest person alive right now that's not a good place to be <laughs> you're not sure about something rub it against a piece of paper if the paper turns clear, it's your window, window to weight, weight gain. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. <laughs> Pull it up, Jamie. Oh my God! It's like are sitting at the at the crusty burger and wipes the wall with yes. the crusty burger he sees through. Uh, yeah, people. It's just insane. Like I was, I was thinking about this a little bit in the ten minutes I had to prepare for this podcast, and I was thinking about like, like. Telling someone who's um, bulimic, well, just stop throwing up your food. Yeah. Is like the same way everyone's like arguing about abortion. Like, like oh, well, everyone can do it or no one can do it. It's re- it's literally yeah. just, the, it's like, no. Well, why is this thing happening at a rate? Like, why are so many people either choosing not to eat? It's like, it's like everyone now is either obese or bulimic yeah. or both at the same time. That's scary. Ridiculous. Anyway... What do you got for me? What moment you want? I got both. I got a good one. I got a bad one. I got a couple of good ones. Is it an angry one? Ones. I got an angry one, yeah. Angry one? Yeah. Pack your... Hit me with it. I listened to that on the way here. It's a great song. Um, so on... Was it when? Wednesday. Yeah. I'm working the double at the the job I don't like that I have that I have because I need a job Mm -hmm. and I um it was all right I wasn't like pissed that pissed all day but I I ate (laughs) I ate a piece of pork without chewing it and I choked on it (laughs) so bad (laughs) that so this this happens a lot (laughs) where I forget to chew and I choke (laughs) and sometimes it's usually I'm sitting in the Wegmans parking lot before my shift eating some like shitty Wegmans Chinese food, and I'm just like easy solution <laughs> here, please chew. No, <laughs> so I was just like, <laughs> and, and then it goes away, and I'm okay. But this is the second time where I've choked so bad that I have to puke to yeah. get it out. So I go down to the the staff bathroom, and I'm trying to throw up this pork, and I thought I got it all, but I couldn't keep water down for like a while, and so I go to my dad's to flip my laundry, like I was gonna do anyway. And I'm at my dad's house, and I'm like, I, I, it's like an hour after I ate this pork, and I still can't keep water down, and I'm like constantly trying to throw up, and oh <laughs> so I, I call my doctor, and because I had thought that it all came up, and I'm like, yeah. hey, I choked, and now I still can't keep water down, and they're like, you need to go to urgent care or the ED right now and get a chest X-ray because that's really bad. Yeah, and I was like, so pissed. Like, just so angry at that for some reason. I'm like, this is so stupid. I wish I just chewed my food. I just want to go back to my stupid job that I hate. Like, why Why do I have to go to urgent care right oh now? I don't want to do this. And so I'm just, like, sitting on the bathroom floor at my dad's house, just, like, screaming angry. He was gone. I was going in the house. I was just like, what the fuck? They're like, oh just God. so angry. And so I go to urgent care. I... I basically was puking the whole time but like in my mouth (laughs) yeah and like i got there and no one was at the counter and i had to puke right then so i ran to the bathroom and somebody snaked me when i got back and it was one of the bartenders at playhouse oh really (laughs) yeah i don't know i don't think he even noticed me but whatever it's like man got so i get in there i'm waiting for the doctor and they're like do you need like a puke bag i'm like yeah i mean 
I'm probably gonna. And then, so I'm just sitting there, and then, like, my stomach got more involved with the puking this yeah. time. So it just, like, whoop, 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 and then it, it came out. I'm sitting there, like, all right, there it is. Can I go home now? Like, everything's fine. So after choking and puking for, like, two and a half hours, it was oh, just fine. That's fucking awful, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, yeah, just that was stupid. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Very blatant. And then the next day, I throttled my giant cyst in my ear with a kettlebell, and that hurt. So, yeah. I'm just... is, that, is that headphone irritating it, or is it all No, right? it's fine. I just can't sleep on this side or touch my ear. Hmm. Yeah. And I was bracing so hard at the gym today that I really thought it was going to blow up. Oh, that's like, awesome. I was just like, and I felt it like, <laughs> like throttling. Oh, when I was uh, bouldering last week for the first time, the, uh... wow, it looks great now. The scar on my pinky, like, just split. Oh, yeah? Just, just like, holding on so tight, and it was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, let's see what I got for you. Let me do... <sighs> well, let's talk about my anxiety attack. It's kind of like this. good song i'm gonna listen to that album later <clears throat> so that total social anxiety like panic attack whatever it is i forget the difference between a panic attack and an anxiety attack i think one of them is mental and one of them is mental and physiological hmm. yeah is panic like physiological too i think panic is without it i think okay. anxiety is when it you get the cortisol dump oh and the adrenaline yeah i went to vertex which, for context, is a goth bar. Really ridiculous goth bar. My favorite thing about that is I tried to Google Vertex once. Nothing showed up. I Googled goth bar and Vertex showed up. That's amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's great there. Yeah, we were so, going to go. We knew we were going to go for a while. Like, because our buddy Rich was in town, and he was going there at the bachelor party, and, and it happened to also be the girlfriend's birthday, and she wanted to go, and I was like, all right, cool, you know, great. Um. I know I, I talked earlier about, in the earlier podcast, about the kind of social anxiety panic attacks I used to get. Mm-hmm. I guess it's more like agoraphobia than social anxiety, hmm. although I'm not sure. Agoraphobia is more panic of, like... Um, well, it's people and open spaces, and it's, it's both. Like, it's like um, uncertainty and, like, mm. a lack of control and, like, yeah. So, because like, the way I get fixated on the fact that people are so disgenuous and fake... It's probably more to do with the fact that they're, like, trying to be deceiving or lying. It's not really about the fact that they're people. Because if I was around a bunch of people, the fact that I don't have, I never get social pressure. I feel no social pressure around, like, people I'm friends with, people I know Mm -hmm. at a busy skate park. Never at a, I could be be the center of attention at a jam. Yeah. But when it's, so, anyway. I also had a a bad experience at Vertex once, which probably primed me for this. We went there with my friends. And, like, it's literally, like, it's supposed to be this judgment-free goth zone, goth zone, dance, whatever. We yeah. were, it's a goth bar, whatever. We're dancing, and, like, we were getting vibed out real hard, that because we weren't, like, goths. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, this is supposed to be, like, a judgment-free zone. Like, there's people... There's pirates there. Yes. <laughs> there's pirates in chains. Pirates, there's people uh, in uh, uh, cosplay, there's, like... People dressed in latex. This is like they're just mall, like mall metal people that never grew up. Yeah, just like ridiculous. And we're getting vibed out that like bunch we're of no- just normal bunch of normies doing Jaeger bombs. It's it, it's funny that like <laughs> in any context, like everywhere else I go, it's like Dave. All you ever wear is black. Yeah, I'm ironically not wearing black <laughs> right now. And then they go to the goth bar. It's like you're yeah, normal, dude. Yeah. Like, so then, like this chick was vibing on us in the dance floor, and she just literally was throwing elbows at my friend, yeah. like because we were just we were literally just a bunch of dudes dancing, yeah. to, like tr- like Marilyn Manson like <laughs> uh, house music, you know, just ridiculous. I don't then, ever dance in Vertex. Is the only place they'll be like, who, who cares? Yeah. It's Vertex, man. <laughs> and then the the bouncer saw the things going down, and it was pretty obvious to me that they were being a little bit biased to us because we looked like the outsiders even though we were doing nothing but actually dancing yeah then you know i think the bouncer came over and was like you gotta fucking chill out and it's like bro we're just dancing like yeah whatever 
So that I guess that kind of shattered the idea that it was a judgment-free zone, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't really feeling like going, and but I put it up on the pedestal, like, we're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go. And I was like, all right. Oh, then the funny thing was uh, the, the girlfriend thought I was already there. <laughs> so she's like, where are you? And I'm like, in my room. And she's like, oh, shit. And then she's like, well, do you want me to come get you or do you want to just come back later? And I was like, I was sitting there going, I, I really don't want to go. I'm kind of stressing it, but I want to face the dragon. I don't want to not be a, mm -hmm. like, you know, so I'm like, no, no, I'm good. Come, you know, come get me or whatever. Just came and got me. And then I was like, yeah, I'm really not feeling it, but I'm just trying to like deal with it. And she's like, oh, okay. And then we got there and I was like, fuck. And the Harry Potter looking guy took your money and gave you a stamp. <laughs> oh my God. It doesn't look like Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, yeah, we got a, I got a beer and I was just sitting there and I was like my, my hand was shaking my, my hand was like was like shaking and my mm -hmm. mouth was like my jaw was wow. kind of like quivering and I was just like um no like I'm fine I'm, this is fine everything's fine you know and then like I start looking at all the people in their dumbass <laughs> the dumbass outfits and shit it's just like I'm not trying to bash them for doing what they're doing you know that's their safe space in the weekend to dress ridiculous but it's <clears> like <throat> like who are you you know like you're decked Damn. out in all this this, you know, leather, <laughs> plastic, corset thing with fucking black makeup. It's like, it's like as far from being like, honestly, who you are as you could be. You're just covering yourself with accessories and stuff. To, and it's just like, that's at least where my brain went then. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't stop. And I was like, and then, you know, I'm like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not fine. And, you know, and the more I tried to be like, no, I'm, I'm in control here. Everything's fine. It's the worse and worse it felt. Yeah. And, it's not like the room was spinning, but it was like, I was like, I'm not in control of my own, what, like, I'm having a physiological response. I can't control it. This is not like something that happens, hasn't happened in years, which makes it seem even more ridiculous that yeah. I can't get a grip on it. Because I can, like, I do ridiculous shit riding where it's, like, super dangerous and, like, super high adrenaline. And it's, like, the likelihood of something bad happening. And I could walk that line and be calm and collective and spine. And then I'm at this bar with goths. And I'm like, ah. So and then Lindley was there with her husband and I, and I know them and they're with two of a uh, girl that comes to ladies night and her boyfriend so like there was an abundance of people there so I mm -hmm. should have had security but oh it's not like I know a bunch of people here it's fine wasn't helping and then they're like we're gonna go upstairs and dance and I was like uh, I'm gonna stay here yeah and then um, I went I walked home <laughs> oh that's not a super f close walk it's like two miles yeah. I guess it's not that bad. But yeah, still. No, it, when you you run and ride and shit, you're like, oh, it's two miles. Whatever, yeah. Fuck it. But I like, you know, the fact that it was the girlfriend's birthday and and it, we were already there. It's like no matter how the situation pulls, no matter how this plays out, I'm ruining something. Like it's gonna be an issue. Mm -hmm. And how do I get through this to minimize, you know, the collateral damage of this panic attack? So I was like, all right. What I do, it's like, like, I could, like I could say, I'm just gonna go walk around or whatever, go chill at Liberty Pole or something. Yeah. But then I know, she's not gonna want to stay upstairs and dance and do whatever she wants to do. At a certain point, she's like, all right, well, Dave's waiting. You know. Yeah. I don't want to do that because it's to cut out the fun. Yeah. I was like, other scenario is like I tell her I'm leaving and there's no way that's gonna fly. Yeah. So I just, just didn't didn't say anything and I just freaking left and as I'm going out the door. Like, I'm literally out the door, and someone's like, Dave! And then it's like, it was Andrea, and she's like, oh, and then we, she started talking, like, talking about Josh, and I'm just sitting there going, I need to fucking leave, yeah. you know? Like, like I was like, like, a foot out the door, hey, Dave! I'm like, oh, motherfucker! It's like, I just need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So I, like, power walked home. I think it bothered, it fucked up my knee. <laughs> oh, it's even worse when and it's then, like... Eventually, she texts me and is like, oh, where are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm just chilling, like, I'm outside. Just let me know when you're done. And finally, you know, like, an hour later, she's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm done. Where are you? And I'm like, in bed. <laughs> she's like, what the fuck? You know, what do you do? Why, you, you know? <sighs> and then she was really upset. And I was just like, that made it so much worse. And then I, yeah. I was, like, super emotional. And I was just like, I'm like, I'm not just being a little, like, not just being a bitch. Well, I was being a bitch, but 
But sometimes you just can't yeah. control that. And I was like, and I know how I'm always like, oh, you got to face your shit. And oh, you got to like try and you can't run away from it. I'm like, this, this never happens. It's so rare. I was like, you just need to, like, this is the one time I need a little leeway. And I was like, I tried to explain. I'm like, you know, the three scenarios, like this was the best one that allowed you to have the most fun you could possibly have. And then she's like, you walked home. I'm like, it's not even far. Yeah. It's, kind of like, it's like, it, it's so funny how, like, it, either way, it's like, you're, the the person you you love is or you're upset. Like, you you put yourself through that to walk home because I would have done this and that. Like, but no, well, you, were th- you were thinking of someone else. Yeah. In that scenario where you needed to do what you needed to do. I think the best compromise would have been like, oh, I'm going to go walk around outside and let me know when you're done. But then she would, I know she would have felt bad. And, yeah. and it's like, I wanted you to get the maximum fun that you yeah. can get out of it. And, then, you know, the whole thing ended up to a whole bunch of just really emotional discussion at night. And it was, it's exhausting. the next day I was shot, dude, like the ad- adrenal dump and just all the cortisol or whatever the fuck was going on. Like the next d- morning I was like, I was fucking fried. Mm-hmm. I was just like drained. I was like, "That's so crazy!" Like, I must have just dumped so much adrenaline and everything. It was terrible. Yeah, that I can't sucks. believe I used to do that all the time. They weren't so severe because I was used to it. <laughs> I was like, "This doesn't happen." I'm fine. I'm yeah. fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Not fine. Oh, God, I feel all tight in the chest just talking about it. Fuck vertex. <laughs> Damn DMV goth chick. My, uh, one of my old co-workers' girlfriends got roofied there and then fell down those stairs <laughs> and destroyed her leg. Oh, no. She just got out of her walking boot after, like, almost a year, maybe, oh, like, yeah. six or eight months. I was still at good luck when it happened, so, yeah. She, like, broke her leg and tore most of the ligaments <laughs> real bad. Ugh. Yeah. So. You know, it's like, do you want to, like... Do you want to be reserved most of the time and then, like, on the weekend one night go out and just be like, this is who I am? It's like, is it who you are? Yeah, it's such a weird thing. It's like, thing. I try to be as honest with myself every day, and it's like, I don't need to go, like, like here's a, uh, an anecdotal version of this. My buddy John, one of my best friends, does cosplay and uh, medieval combat fighting. Oh, and like, sweet. He does, like, like the... He does LARPing, mm-hmm. and he does real combat, where like, oh, wow. they're, they're not oh, real swords, but they're wood, and you have real like metal armor. It's like you yeah. kick each other's ass. Like at Renaissance fairs and stuff? Yeah, kind of, but like more hardcore than that. So he, um, he like, there's a character and a timeline, and these, these organizations rent out entire campgrounds, and mm-hmm. the whole campground is in, in costume, in character, period. Like, you cannot break character. Huh. And like, so... And this, the, the, I guess the storyline, the timeline freezes when the weekend ends, and then it picks back up the next time, mm. right? So I said to John, I was like, "What, like, so at what point, like, if 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 you began LARPing more and more and more and more, and like, and like, living your normal like less and less and less, like, who's the real you at one point?" And he was like, "What do you?" <gasps> <laughs> like he just like I never thought like like if you if you're living in a, as a secondary character right it's like at what point like if you're specifically not integrating it into you the normal you you're creating a second like avatar of you or something yeah that's like that's kind of like how I felt about you know, people that will just they live for the weekend or they live for something like alternative like that where it's like yeah so weird that's got to conflict with you like internally somewhere something's confused. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, let's. Um, you don't have any. Do you have anything there? Anxiety. No. Just, I think that's just most of my existence. <laughs> but. Existence is pain. <laughs> I need to get that sound bite. Oh uh, yeah. Well, let's. Let's let's lighten it up here and do. will do a beautiful moment then. Yeah, it's been a while, so it's been a bunch of beautiful moments for me. We did a big, big group bike ride a couple of weeks ago, which is freaking awesome, taking a bunch of people mountain biking that never been mountain biking and just yeah. having a blast. That looks super fun. But my beautiful moment would be my, uh, <laughs> so I, I uh, this is probably not a beautiful moment for anyone else. I did, 
I had my heart rate at 175 for nine minutes. That was crazy. I, I adopted, I tried out this breathing technique that my brother told me about. It's a, uh, you breathe deeply. <laughs> I don't know if that's really a technique, but basically you're saying you inhale as much as you can, and pull the diaphragm as high as you can, and then like let it all out. Just just big, deep breaths till everything, almost like it feels like it hurts, like you can't get any more in. And it feels kind of panicky because normally when your heart rate gets up, you're, mm -hmm. you're breathing fast. But Oh, so you do that when you're doing So the... I'm railing, I'm yeah. right, I'm railing, and I'm just like... <sighs> like yeah. to, to the point where full diaphragm pull up and it's like, yeah. it's almost like it hurts like you're trying to yeah, expand. Yeah, workout. And um, I'm railing the, this section of trail and I'm railing it, I'm railing it. And I look down and I'm like, holy shit, like I'm like 175 beats per minute. And I was like... Okay, and I'm just watching it, and I'm riding, and, like, about halfway through it, I started to hit a little bit of that lac lactic acid kind of in the legs, but I just kept pushing through it, kept pushing through it, and the heart rate kept kind of trending up. Toward the end, I was, I, I broke 180 toward the end, but for nine minutes, I was in that zone, and for my age, that's the red zone. That's 90% that's of my max, Wow. which is, like, for interval training, you do, like, one minute on, three minutes off, one minute on, three minutes off, or, mm -hmm. or three and five or three and seven like i was looking up all interval training and nowhere could i find anywhere it's like yeah do that for nine minutes so you know maybe it was bad for me maybe it was good for me i don't know it, either way it was a major accomplishment and i couldn't believe that i managed to do that for that long without feeling like i was gonna die that's incredible no, normally <laughs> that my heart rate is that high i'm like i a minute maybe yeah. two minutes crazy yeah that's and i was i was like um my lungs felt weird later in the day. Like, like that. I'm sure that was quite the workout. Like it almost felt like I had been, um, I don't know, it's hard to describe. Like maybe like the day or two after you have a cold mm. and your lungs are kind of like, you could tell they just like kind of got their ass kicked. Yeah. That's kind of how I felt kind of weird like that. It's got to be good in some way to tear some of your lung muscle fibers to oh, make well, a bigger expand, you know, um, bigger capacity or something. But it was cool. So shout out Gary. Uh, it worked. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, shout out all those longer segments that I'm coming after now. <laughs> Hell yeah. I got like seven KOMs last week. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. That one I got it. I <clears throat> got two in the middle of the longer nine minute. It That segment, so remember we got caught in the rain? That segment is from when you turn off the sidewalk into turning point and when you come out at the zoo. It's the whole length of the park. Jeez. I averaged 16 and a half miles an hour and did the whole thing in nine minutes. Jeez. The whole thing. All the way through. Oh, it's dying. Jeez, Rick. Oh jeez! Uh, what do you got for me? <clears throat> um, the first one that comes to mind is the spine mini jam, and oh, that was great. Yeah, finally, like I I haven't worked for a trick in a long time, and to like really try it and get that close on the first one and know that it was possible and just to like like to land it all all shitty like i did and then do it again oh correctly. and you get all the crowd everyone's pumped on yeah. you doing the trick like it felt so good like i was just so happy to be right that whole day was just so much fun just riding bikes with everybody it's interesting that both of our moments are are based on uh mental and physical accomplishments mm -hmm. and yours is like definitively in that moment you landed and everyone was cheering and yeah. mine was i didn't even realize what it is i did until i Finished my ride. Yeah. I uploaded it, and I was looking at my, my, my stats, and I was like, what? Yeah. I did that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, it's, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, the goal-driven thing is cool. Like, being, I'm going to do this, and then it happens, and then you are still shocked that you did it. That's crazy, too. I didn't see I haven't, uh, Josh is supposed to edit that video. He said he'd up. He said he would doc. You'd keep his hours and let me know. And mm -hmm. but it's not uploaded yet, so I don't know. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. I think that, there were some that's crazy maneuvers like in that, tra that that jam. Yeah, and it like it just feels so good to be as confident as I am on my bike now. Like I'm oh, riding yeah. better than I ever have. Yeah, I haven't, <clears> seen, <throat> I haven't seen you bike in a little while. Oh, we went to that Canada trip. That was really nice too. Yeah, and I was exhausted that day. It was it was amazing. I rode that much. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing was the other day I've, I've had this goal of lifting my body weight in each hand mm. with the two kettlebells and I, mm. I got it. It's just like the, the whip to, to ice where like I, I got it, but I went to tail tap when I dropped in. So, so what your body weight in each hand? Yeah. So 170, oh 
176 pound kettlebell in and you lift hand. all with your back in a twisting jerk yeah, motion just like that okay. just wrench it <laughs> wrench like <laughs> yeah and um so like we had a I don't know. It was a it was an easier day, and at the end, I was I was somebody had had those kettlebells out for something else, and they were set up just in the way. And I the would, light was just shining down. Yeah, and ah. that, I, I looked. It was like um, we do these hover things, so you go into a push up position, and then you kind of find where you where everything hurts, yeah. and where there's like weak points, and you kind of hover around. And I looked oh. at, I looked at Greg, and I'm like, I gotta lift those, and he's like, You will, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> and then he walked away. I looked at him a little longer. I lifted the the lighter ones. And it worked. So then I just got I fucking set up my phone. And I took a little video of me standing up. But so I got it up all the way up in the air, legs locked out. But I like was so excited. I got all wobbly and put him down. Oh wow! <laughs> so next time I go, or next time I feel up to it. Today was heavy deadlift, so I didn't want to work those muscles anymore. I did the Ninja Warrior on Friday. That looked awesome. I saw it. I was. The bouldering made me sore. The Ninja Warrior was, was pretty tough, too. Yeah. Phil's going to do a Ninja Warrior contest, and I'm all jazzed up on the bouldering and the Ninja Warrior. I think I'm going to start doing both of those. I think I might try to aim for doing a Ninja Warrior contest. Yeah. Dude, the one thing, uh, man, it was so hard. It was like um, it's like a 2 by 10 mm -hmm. with, like, holes drilled in them every foot, and you just have, like, these pegs. Pegs, yeah. yeah. And you're just, you're, like, you got to, like, hold with this arm and then put in the next thing and then, like, move it over, and you got to go over <laughs> And like the first one's not so bad, but then the tenth. Then you one do is... you do three of them. Don't, yeah. don't give me ten. <laughs> you do three of them, and you're like, oh no. Yeah. The salmon ladder thing where the yeah. Phil was just like boom, 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 and I got it. I couldn't do one. I kept getting the left one would go up one, and the right one wouldn't. It's interesting. There's how, like, so some, much technique. Sometimes, yeah, so much of lifting and stuff like that is just technique. Like, yeah, it's. I'm learning that with the bouldering and the Ninja Warrior that it's like doing it right makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But you still have to be strong and present and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. There's um, like a power clean. It's like you go, you start from a deadlift position and you pull it up. And then when you get to this like shrug and weightless position, you throw your hands underneath and you it's like that weightless moment. So it's all technique, mm -hmm. but you also still have to be able to muscle it up and be yeah. strong. So it's like. <laughs> It's weird, like, what it, there, there's points where I've, I've done that, and I know I can lift heavier if my arms just do the right thing when they're supposed mm -hmm. to, but I can't, because they just get all noodly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like the second time I climbed, when I climbed with you guys, uh, my arms didn't really get too fatigued, but my feet were killing me, because yeah. the first time, they're like, guy, you're like, dude, you're just relying on your strength, and you're all arms, it's supposed to be feet, so the second time, I'm like, right, use my feet, like, yeah. God, this freaking hurts. Yeah. The bouldering is super fun, though. I want to go back and do that. I, my wrist is starting to feel a little better, so I think once my wrist is strong, I can do it. Because yeah. there was one where I like, I went to get up on that upside downy one. Yeah. And I was like, that's the actual technical term. <laughs> and like, I grabbed it and I'm like, oh no, I can't even start because my wrist is oh, just yeah. so bad. Oh uh, well, let's go. When, let's go another morning this week. Are you working? Up, then do you go in? Uh, I go in at two on. Thursday, so I might be able to I'm trying to go to the gym on Thursday morning, but we'll see. I mean, their their hours are pretty late and early too. Yeah, I know fun. how you like getting up early. I've been getting up early. Mm. I haven't gotten up. You know what's crazy? The bouldering and the rock climbing. All right, so I'm used to only feeling fatigued from long cardio work. Like mm. if yeah, both the bouldering times and the and the ninja times, both those following evenings. And the then the second the second day sore is crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm tired. And like I'm yeah. I haven't associated fatigue and being tired with just pure like muscle recovery only mm -hmm. well, I guess it's still technically mo muscle recovery, but I, I guess I just had it falsely thinking it was only like cardio exercise. So I was like It kicks your ass, man. The two nights after each of those events I was in bed early. Yeah. And I was I was sitting there like eleven thirty like well, I said, uh, uh, <laughs> the second the the so Friday I did Ninja Warrior at like two thirty. When I woke up Saturday morning, I wasn't that sore, but by like two thirty Saturday midday, it yeah. kicked in. Like I yeah. woke up not sore, and then like throughout the day, I progressively got more sore. And I was like, I've never really felt this before, so I guess I've just been working out like a bitch because I don't work out. <laughs> I just get by with with what's there, bike muscles. 
Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely go climbing this week, though. Super fun. Sweet. Got to get to work. Yeah, you got to go to work. That's yeah. good. Whatever. I mean, this is some content. I like it. Nice and easy. Uh, chill sesh. Just chillers. Just throw away clips. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for checking it out, guys. Uh, let us know if you're one of the seven people that have watched or listened to this podcast. If 20 you th- by 2020. 20. <laughs> Uh, if you like it, let us know, and we'll do more mellower or whatever, you know, if you're one of the six people. So, I changed the buttons here, so I had the, sh- uh, which one is it? Intro, F3. All right, well, I'll see you guys later.